So season two's officially been revealed and there's a lot to go over. Some good, some bad, but today we're taking an objective look at everything we've got. Just giving you the details, personal thoughts and opinions at a later time. But for this, we'll just be taking a look at what was presented. So drop your thoughts below. What do you think of the new content from Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ? And as well, as for the last week here, check out my friends at Gamer Advantage for the best blue glasses on the market. Code Espresso will get you 24% off your entire order, but more on them in a bit. For now, let's talk about our first look at the fully revealed season two for Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. So as you can see by the roadmap, we ended up getting first and foremost. There are a few big ticket items, some things that may surprise you here alongside this, but starting with the key marquee items here, Ashika Island, of course, is that big thing that we'll see within season two, marketed, debuting, all that kind of stuff, what they're really pushing here. This is return of the resurgence mode for Warzone, where you can end up redeploying, you can end up spawning back in. You have more than just one singular life, assuming your team stays alive and gives you a chance to get back into the action. That's something is definitely nice. Resurgence was a great asset to Warzone 1. Tons of people loved it, but that's going to be returning here with this. We also see the new feature called Restore Honor, where dog tags will drop upon death once per match that they can be picked up by enemies or teammates after redeploying. And doing so will grant a small cash reward as well as a single UAV ping to mark enemy threats and nearby supply boxes. To me, this kind of sounds like a mix between the towers and rebirth that would give you the UAV pings and the ones you'd end up getting in resurgence kills in Warzone 1, but there's no word if this actually replaces that feature or not. We'll also see a new contract called Search and Seizure in Season, where cash and other in-game items are rewards. We are tasked with reclaiming a stolen SUV or patrol boat from Shadow Company forces and to take it to a new destination. So that means AI will be guarding the vehicle, and yes, AI are on Ashika Island and Rebirth, unfortunately. Then we see the Data Heist new public event, where three uplink stations will come in at Zone 2, where you can download progress of the machines. You can speed that progress up by eliminating AI around it, and completing the progress will give you XP, cash, and random pieces of tactical equipment. Though if you do multiple, you can get streaks and an advanced UAV. That advanced UAV likely for completing all three in the match. Redeploy drones are going to be coming in season, very similar and working almost identically to redeploy balloons from Warzone 1. They can be shot down, but you can't actually buy these back to end up, say, repairing them. Instead, you'll have to wait for the interestingly random respawn of these in different locations around the map. So keeps you on your toes, I guess, if you want to try and get around the map fast. There is no word right now if those are going to be coming to Almazra, though I would imagine that's either likely in season or coming later on in the year. We will see a new AI combatant called the Rusher who has a sword and a pistol that will rush at you. They have more agility but less armor so you can down them easily but it might just be a quick little shock to you. We also will see that DMZ will be getting a new boss called the Bomb Maker for Ashika Island. Nothing's really detailed on this one beyond just the fact that the weapon cases will be tethered to this one similar to the Juggernaut in Almazra so you can find him perhaps roaming the lands of Ashika Island maybe not even on a static spawn or one of, I would imagine, like three or four spawn points. Pick them off, pick up the case, and then extract with it. Additionally, for other war zone changes in particular, we have Almazra. We have a point of interest update for around Satik Caves. Without diving into the ambiguity of the details given or not given in the blog post, rather, Afghan is now fully in Almazra. It was previously kind of there. It had everything but the plane by Satik Caves, but now you'll end up having that with Season 2 and the update there. Now, it might be something that there's a lot more AI, as described earlier, because it's a point of interest with rivaling factions fighting for the plane. So we'll see how that works out in DMZ and then also in Battle Royale. Perk packages will now be able to be updated on a personal level. You can change and adjust your packages to how you see fit in Season 2. Definitely nice. Combat records will be finally coming in Season 2 with all stats tracking from the inclusion beyond. But what we've done in Season 1 so far will not track and will have no effect on your statistics thus far. And beyond that, a new personal watercraft, a jet ski as they dodged calling it in the blog, will be available on Alpha. Mazra, as well as Ashika Island. For DMZ in particular, we know, of course, that mission refresh is coming, that inventory wipe as well. This, again, not something we'll see every single season, but seems to be a necessary evil that is a result of changing so much in regards to how challenges are scaled in terms of the difficulty, as well as then making them available and sort of tailored for all three play spaces coming in Season 2. We also have that new faction called Crown. Again, not too much is really given here on it, other than that there will be new rewards for completion of each tier. That was kind of a given though, but that's what was given here for the Warzone and DMZ side of things. For Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer, well, let's start out with the weapons here. We have five in season, four coming at launch the ISO Hemlock Assault Rifle in the Battle Pass, the KV Broadside Shotgun in the Battle Pass, and surprisingly, a third weapon will be in the Battle Pass here. The dual Kadachi melee weapons will be in the Battle Pass as well. We'll see at launch available in either a store bundle or via event completion. The crossbow will be available in season two as well. Then in season, we have detailed the Tempest Torrent. That's something we'll see likely via weapon.
weapon challenge and store bundle mid-season, but right now there wasn't anything detailed on that. One nice part is that it doesn't seem like anything is tethered to DMZ in particular for unlocking a weapon like we saw with the M13B and the Chimera. The only thing that sort of has an alternate way to unlock this is the crossbow, which comes along with the completion of the new Path of Ronin event. Now, this is going to be something that is our first seasonal event, the Path of the Ronin event having seven challenges you have to complete, each coming along with completion rewards such as a gun screen or weapon charm, but if you complete all seven, you unlock the crossbow functional weapon. Very similar to what we saw with the Psy melee weapon in Season 4 or 5 of Black Ops Cold War, if my memory serves me correctly, but that'll be your weapons here for Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer and then transferring over to DMZ and Warzone as well. Now, as for maps... Okay, listen, I said that I'm only giving you the facts and specific details, biting my tongue on stuff until a later video, just to keep it all information, but... I mean, I guess we got four maps coming. For 6v6, we have Dome and Museum. Both returning maps, neither brand new in any capacity from either prior games, or in the case of Warzone from Almazra, and then a map that was there from the beta. For Ground War, we have Zaya Observatory and Al Malik International. Both of these are no surprise to me, or at least the lack of originality of those two. Ground War has been taken from the Warzone maps since Modern Warfare 2019, so I'm not surprised by this at all. I actually expected it, though honestly, I didn't see two of them coming. Now, pending no changes, one nice part, I guess, is that it seems that all of these will appear to be coming at launch. No weight on any of them coming in season or randomly throughout the season. So that begs the question of what comes with mid-season. A new set of maps at that point? I mean, one can hope that maybe we get two, three, four more maps at mid-season because we've never had a mid-season update without any multiplayer updates for maps. But I mean, is it also bad that I wouldn't be surprised if this was the first time they did that, making all four available at launch to make it seem like a bigger multiplayer offering for traditional multiplayer and then just not give anything later on for the next two months? But anyways, four maps coming and revealed. Modes, actually, these are pretty cool stuff oppositely. Infected, Gun Game, and Grind all are going to be there at launch. All three great modes. Grind is really good historically for XP if you're looking to grind stuff out. Hardcore will be replacing Tier 1 at launch. Drop Zone, All or Nothing, and One in the Chamber are all coming in season as well. So when it comes to modes, I'm actually really happy with the offering this season. Looking forward to jumping in and playing a bunch of these. Ranked Play, of course, will be launching here with Season 2's launch. This being a standalone competitive multiplayer mode using Season DL approved rules, restrictions, maps, and modes, while rewarding players with exclusive items and visible skins to show off their ranks. There will be seven skill divisions from bronze to iridescent, iridescent being that top one, all the way up to the top 250 where your name will be displayed and a top 250 leaderboard, as we've seen with previous Call of Duty games. Skill division skins will be based on your highest rank of seasons going forward, including a set for finishing a season in the gold division and above for the first time, as well as unique rewards given out each season for completion. They did state, if you're interested in anything further, that there will be a dedicated ranked play blog post detailing rewards, ranking system, and more upcoming, though they did not give any ETA. Again, that's something we have a week to work with here, so any point during tomorrow, Friday, Monday, or Tuesday is when I'd expect that. As for our operator for the season, we do have Ronan returning. Interestingly, that is the only operator still detailed, so we don't know about anything in season. We don't know of any other operators coming at the moment, so... Ronan is going to be there, but then we finally have new prestiges detailed. Again, we're going to be going from level 250 to 500, an additional 250 levels to rank up through this season. Now, unlike prior games, your rank will not reset here as it did within seasons from Modern Warfare 2019 all the way through Vanguard. Instead, this is just cumulative. They're just adding 250 more ranks on top of the 250 we have now. So five additional prestiges that you can end up going through, but that is going to be something that will be still hard level capped at level 500 after season two launches. And finally, the last thing detailed was that we will have a new raid coming mid-season for episode two of the sort of raid series that we have here. So looking forward to that as well. But beyond that, that is season two here, fully revealed and everything given to us that we can expect starting as of next Wednesday. Now, that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Now, before we do that, though, a reminder to check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage, the best blue light glasses company on the market. Myself being at my desk working for six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours a day at a time, seven days a week. For years on end, absolutely, I felt the effect of blue light over the years, and having tried just about any pair off Amazon you could find that are generic, they don't even hold a candle to Gamer Advantage. They're the most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames on the market. Their lenses clinically proven. You can check all that stuff out down there in the description below, learn the science behind all of it. But right now, why we bring it up is because site-wide, there are a few frames that are 14% off, but with code Espresso, it stacks, giving you an additional 10%, bringing it to 24% off total from now until the 14th Valentine's Day. So if you guys would like to learn more, pick something up for yourself, use code Espresso. This is the best deal that we've seen since the holidays 
and probably will see for quite some time. The big discounts like this don't come around too often. So if you guys are interested, check the link in the description below. But for now, let me know your thoughts once again down below. What do you guys think here of season two and the offering we have at hand? What's been revealed? Do you like it so far? What are the case? Drop your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it out insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. For now, thanks so much for watching. Modest Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.